Hello, it's me. Sorry for the long video. I had to play both Leon and Claire, so it's basically two games in one. If you don't understand, basically you play the same shit for both characters, just with slight differences in the story. So if Claire goes to a place where Leon's been and there's new stuff, just imagine an elf with a magic pen came through and changed some shit around. Also, we're mostly focusing on Leon because he's the first one I played as, and most of the script I wrote with him in mind. I'm just sprinkling Claire's parts in like seasoning afterwards. Also, also, we just hit 8,000 subs today as I'm recording this. That's probably equal to the amount of girls that reject me in a three month period. Seriously though, thanks, that's amazing. Anyway, thanks to these guys for the suggestion. Load up Resident Evil 2, start a new game. Welcome to a moldy looking burger. I don't know what looks worse, the burger or the mouth that's eating it. Here we have a bloke driving down a spooky dark road in the rain, listening to a guy on the radio talking about zombies and stuff. Our lorry driver friend here is so scared by the zombie talk that he tries to turn off the radio, causing him to look away from the road for an extended period of time. That was one big speed bump. The lorry driver gets out and I assume checks to see if this person's alive. His optimism is great. I hate to be that guy though, but the average person can't really survive receiving a lorry to the face at 60 mile per hour. Stand corrected. Anyway, you're Leon Kennedy, a rookie police officer slash Calvin Klein model on your way to start your new job at the Raccoon City Police Department. You're filling up your car at a police station when you notice an unlocked police car and blood on the ground followed by smashing glass inside. You're like, that's weird. No, it's not. Ground, blood and unlocked police cars are features of every petrol station. At least, the ones in Birmingham. Since you're a policeman, you go to investigate and find a flashlight that's perfect for seeing more ground blood. Of course, you have a normal response to this. Something's not right. Yes, Leon, no fucking shit. Can we get an award for Captain Obvious over here? The store owner's on the floor with a chunk of his neck missing, but he's still alive and directs you to the back where you find the sheriff trying to arrest a criminal. <laughs> that is one hungry criminal. You shoot this manic individual and go back into the main store. Yeah, don't worry about the sheriff or anything. He's probably fine. Suddenly, there's more manic individual. You know what? I can't be bothered the beating around the bush with what these are. Oh no, zombies! As you're running to escape, someone bursts in through the door. You're like, hey there, you come here often? Can you flirt with me after you've shot the zombie behind me? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> This is Claire. She also most likely works part-time as a Calvin Klein model, but you don't have time to appreciate the tent in your trousers. There's a lot of zombies suddenly here, even though you're in a petrol station in the middle of nowhere. You and Claire jump into the police car that fortunately still has its keys inside, or else this would have been a very short game, and drive towards Raccoon City. Claire is looking for her brother, who's also a policeman officer. I assume he works at the same place as you, since she's also going to Raccoon City. Anyway, you get into the city and run into traffic worse than the 8 o'clock commute to work, so you're gonna have to walk if you want to reach the police station. But wait, zombies have appeared from nowhere again. This time, it's slightly more believable, since you're in the middle of a city. With the city population currently on your car doors, you can't just get out, and that's a problem because the lorry driver from the start shows up with his neck in bits. He must have got attacked by that person he hit and just chose to tough it out and drive with half a neck. He passes out of the wheel and crashes into you. How you didn't become compressed juice after this, I don't know, but at least you're out of the car now, so let's get Claire out and all will be good. Whoa. Well, maybe she got out in time. Ah. Uh, Claire? You good? You're like, you can't stay here, it's not safe. Like, yeah, once again, very helpful observation. Claire said she'll meet you at the station, so I guess that's where you need to go. You escape down this alley and make your way into the station. I was expecting to find at least one disposable side character that's gonna get eaten by zombies in here, but I guess that wasn't in the budget. After checking the cameras, though, you see that there actually is someone who's still alive. They're in the east hallway and currently being chased by zombies, so let's go help them. You just have to crawl underneath this broken shutter onto a floor that's covered in blood into a dark hallway. I'm not gonna lie, no amount of police training would ever make me comfortable enough to do this, but we need to do the story so I can upload this video. While exploring, you hear our survivor friend calling for help. It appears he's stuck behind this shutter. Using your big strong muscles, you lift the shutter and help him out. From the looks of things though, the zombies may have found him. Listen, I know it hurts a bit, but it's just a few bites. It's not like you're gonna lose your leg or anything. Oh. Hey, did you have Weetabix for breakfast? It's, it's just that, oh, oh, he's dead. Oh, a notepad. This guy was carrying a notepad with some poorly drawn pictures in. There's a time and a place to be practicing art, and now is not it. Good job, Picasso. Anyway, let's keep that. It's probably important. Ah! These zombies must be working off some Roman Legion tactic sheet because they go from being less existent than my dad to an invasive species in the space of two seconds. You run back to the broken shutter and are just about to recreate what happened to that other bloke when a mysterious man pulls you to safety. Oh my god, how strong are you to be able to cave a human skull in with your legs? This is Marvin. He's a lieutenant at the police station, and despite having a hole in his stomach offers to help you up. Listen, I get that he's being nice, but that's a really bloody hand. We're not gonna touch that. Oh god, you did it. Marv gets you a cool RPD uniform and looks over the drawings from that other policeman. The deeds on what is going on is there's a goddess statue that requires three medallions to open it and leads to a secret passageway out of the station, supposedly. So it's up to you to find those three medallions that are somewhere around this station. Luckily, our dead policeman friend had time to draw out the statues and the passwords to retrieve the medallions from them. Maybe if he'd waited to do that when he was safe, he'd probably still be alive. You begin exploring the station that has dead guys and zombies breaking and entering, which is 
a crime and you're a police officer, so you can arrest them if you want. As well as unlock your desk because you want to work, I guess. It's not really the time for that, is it? There's also a weapons locker that has a shotgun in it alongside some locked doors and locked lockers. It's no wonder everyone died in this place because nobody could access anything to defend themselves with. To get the shotgun, you need to find a keycard and keep looking around. On the first floor, there's a broken shower spraying hot steam everywhere that you're gonna have to fix to get past it. Who'd have thought that your duties as a police officer extend to plumbing? Anyway, you're gonna have to find another way around, so head up to the second floor where you find this key that has a spade on it, which must be the way for the police officer to remember which keys unlock where. It makes sense, they probably have a lot of keys. When you're going down this hallway though, you see a naked spider-man crawling across the window you can probably tell by leon's reaction that i shit my undies when i saw this and instead decided to go downstairs to unlock the spade door which takes you back to marv he's like yo bro have you seen this hot zombie trying to get in that's not a zombie that's my friend claire oh man i didn't know your friend was a zombie you trying to hit that what no she's not a zombie are you sure she looks like one hey if i turn into one from this wound you think you could set us up tell me how to find it just go up those stairs and through the door you'll find it is that a no on the setup then? On the way to find Claire, you find a weapons locker keycard. I don't know why it's in this art room. Anyway, you're walking down this hallway towards where Claire is supposed to be when a helicopter crashes into the building. You're checking for survivors when Claire is like, Leon, you fucking bitch, I'm down here. Was the bitch absolutely necessary? It fucking is until you unlock this fucking gate. Oh, I don't have a key for this gate. So what the fuck am I supposed to do? Maybe not call me a bitch next time. You're fucking dead when I get through this gate, bitch. Oh, speaking of dead, what's your opinion on dead lieutenants? What? I've just got this friend Marv, and he's a really cool guy, funny, smart, bit on the dying side. But hey, if you're into that, then- Are you trying to fucking wingman your friend right now, you dick? No, I just thought you could get to know him. Well, that's not good. Anyway, he's a really nice guy and strong, too. I think I have more pressing concerns than a fucking dying lieutenant. Is that a no, then? Yeah, the helicopter explodes and attracts a load of zombies, so she has to run. You're probably wondering what Claire's been up to while you've been running around in the police station, and it's not a lot. She runs down a path. Okay, I've just edited everything I've written up until now, and this video is going to end up longer than the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So I'm going to be quick for the rest of it to save time. Also, so I have less work to do. You managed to find the three medallions by unlocking new areas of the station. For some reason, whoever was in charge thought it was a good idea to put two items that go together as far away from each other as possible, so this takes a while. You get some new guns and fight off the naked Spider-Men. For context, they're called Lickers, and given their exceptional ability to split anything with a pulse in two, God naturally had to nerf their eyesight so they can only hear you. What it means is, if you ever have to move quicker than a fast walk around these things, they'll be on you like you're the next TikTok trend. Anyway, you put the medallions into the statue to open the secret passage. Marvin's looking very bitey, if you get what I'm saying, but you still want to take him with you. He's like, it's okay, you go on ahead, bro. I'll make sure everything's safe here. What? But everyone's already dead. Yeah, but there's a lot of blood, and I need to put a wet floor sign out in case somebody comes by. You're not waiting for Claire, are you? What? No, of course not. She said she doesn't like dead lieutenants, you know. That... that's fine. I'm, I'm not bothered. Why are you pointing a gun at me, then? Oh, this? It's... It, the zombiness. It makes me point guns at people. Right. You sure you don't want to come? No, no, no. I'm all, I'm all good. Underneath the goddess statue, there's a lift that takes you to an area about as welcoming as a sewer owned by Hitler. On the bright side, it took you, a normal thinking human man, a lot of work to get down here, so it's likely that you're safe from the zombies for now. <laughs> This guy looks like me after two years in quarantine with nothing but a laptop and a box of tissues. Yeah, so random as fuck boss fight. If you were hoping to save ammo, then good luck, because this guy just eats bullets like if he was a sponge and the water was bullets. Then he'd like eat them like that. Like how a sponge absorbs water. Meanwhile, Claire finally made it into the station. She found the keys to that gate in a room about 20 feet away. Somehow this still managed to take longer than it took you to run several marathons around the station trying to find those dumb medallions. Also, when she gets into the station, that elf with the magic pen I talked about has been through and reset everything. So she basically has to do the same stuff as you, get the three medallions and find the secret passage. There's also a noob tube in the weapons locker. Would have definitely preferred to have that over the shotgun, but whatever. Anyway, you kill the wanking zombie. More like he falls out of sight where it's impossible to know whether he did or didn't die and will most likely return later to wreak havoc on your bum hole. You you find a ladder that goes to the police station car park, but the gates out are locked, so you'll need to figure out a way to unlock it after this dog has attacked you. Wait, what? <laughs> Fortunately, you're saved by a flasher. Seriously, isn't this the type of coat a flasher wears? Also, how can she aim so well? She's wearing sunglasses at night in a dark car park. Despite Stevie Wonder just saving your ass, you then threaten her at gunpoint. Listen, Chief, if she wanted to hurt you, I guarantee that would have already been done. Anyway, she's all surprised you made it this far. Sorry, do I know you? No. That's just what it says in the script. Script? What are you talking about? You should do yourself a favor and get out of here. That's what I was trying to do, but the door's locked. Hey, where are you going? Through a door. 
what it should look like. You've got no other choice but to follow Stevie Wonder, hoping she can give you a way out, but instead you find this guy in a jail cell. He's all like, I have the key card to the car park. That's great. Can I have it? Only if you free me from the confines of this metal abode. The power's off. I can't open the doors. Well, dear officer, riddle me these questions three, and perhaps I shall give it to you. Listen, you're in a cell. I'm a cop. I can't let you out. It's against the police officing code. Does your foolish brainless anatomy even comprehend the gravity of the situation we're in? What? Get me out of this fucking cell, please! A really strong man breaks through the wall and squishes his face into jam. Then Stevie Wonder appears. I don't know where she went, but she tells you to find a way out again. The circuit board to power the cell gate is broken, so you need to find some electrical parts to fix it. The first one is pretty simple to find. You just open this shutter and it's sat on a table waiting for you like a loving girlfriend after a long day at work. The second one, however, it's also like a loving girlfriend. Impossible to find. At least for me. Play around with these switches until it powers the door. For some reason, it also gets the attention of a local dog shelter. At least we know who let the dogs out now. It was you. Through the newly powered door is the police station. The game remembers we already did this bit, right? After getting some new items and shit from downstairs, you can actually unlock new areas of the station, which is why I'm thinking they sent you back up here. You find a large gear in one of these rooms and go outside to try and find that electrical part, but the only thing you find is a one-way ladder. In order to get back into the station, you need to put the fire out on the helicopter. It just so happens that there's a random lever that pours water on stuff, and it also just so happens that there's a second lever that directs the water onto the burning helicopter. What is the point of this? Minus the zombie apocalypse how is this useful in everyday police officing you put out the fire but now how are you gonna move this helicopter out of the way need some help milady this is what i imagine every nice guy thinks they're capable of doing so fedora wearing nice guy starts thinking you owe him for helping you move the helicopter out of the way and starts chasing you fortunately he moves as fast as a snail with glue on its ass so you sort of just run around him unfortunately he will now be a bothersome fly in your adventure until you complete the game while trying to pour water on the helicopter you find a clover key that can be used to open one of the doors in the station and inside you find this tool pretty much if you use this tool to fix this bookcase you can slide them together because they're on wheels walk across them and go to the top floor of the station there's a bell tower here which for some reason has the other electrical part in it there's probably some note explaining why it's up here but as far as i'm concerned it's a dumb place to leave an electrical part you use the large gear you found earlier to get the bell working which knocks the electrical part on the floor meaning you have everything you need to fix that circuit board down in the prison opening the cell door to get the car park key card is great and all but it may have let out some other inmates in the process no problem if you just go this other way you can loop around and so we meet again, oh god why would you do that? You can't run from true love. Finally, you can open the gate. I told you you can't run from true love. Stevie Wonder saves you again, and you both leave the car park. I should probably mention she's an FBI agent and is investigating what's causing this little outbreak we're in. When you walk down the street, you realize that the road is just gone. So I have to head through this gun store. Hey, are you a zombie? Uh, no. No, I'm, I'm not. That's exactly what a zombie would say. But zombies can't talk. I bet one of them told you to say that. Father, I have shit myself. Stevie, I'm gonna need a hand. Throw off your weapon, mister. How do we know you're not a zombie? Because zombies can't talk. That's what I just said. I know a zombie when I smell one. No, no, no. That's it's just my daughter. Father, I need to sh again. Okay, can we just let them go? The smell is really hurting my nose. If you insist. <laughs> Stevie's mission is to take down a corporation called Umbrella by finding the person in charge called Annette. They're the ones who started this sh**. It's a shame they went into zombies as opposed to making actual umbrellas since it's always raining in this place. Stevie takes you into the sewer, which is where Umbrella's secret facility is, and you notice something large slithering down here. No, it's not a massive log from someone's dodgy curry. It's a radioactive crocodile the size of a school bus. Now, you're probably thinking, Oh my god, Bob, even an average-sized crocodile could kill you. How are you going to survive? I don't know why you sound like that. Anyway, the developers knew that and made it so the crocodile can only attack in straight lines, so some gentle weaving from side to side is enough to evade it and slide under a pipe that is explosive and apparently delicious, according to this crocodile. Then you shoot the pipe, the crocodile becomes crocodeleted from life, and then Stevie is like, I found another way around, so you didn't need to go down there. You and Stevie take a lift deeper into the sewers where you find Umbrella CEO Annette examining a body. Stevie's like, we've come for the G-Virus. That's the virus she made to turn people into zombies. And Annette doesn't want to give you her life's work for some reason and escapes with the most perfect distraction ever. Not sure how FBI agent Stevie was fooled by that. Annette gets away after sinking a bullet into your shoulder when you tried to save Stevie claiming you'll never get the G-Virus. Being a man, you obviously tried to hide the pain and tell Stevie to go ahead and chase after Annette. <laughs> oh, fucking, fucking hell. Is that you, Leon? No. 
Stevie chases after her using her Men in Black sci-fi hack tool, and when she's just about to find her, the nice guy shows up looking for a damsel in distress he can white knight, but Stevie is a strong, independent woman with a sci-fi hack tool, meaning she doesn't need a man. Especially a seven-foot Thanos-looking nice guy. She keeps going after Annette, but she must be a moth because she gets distracted by a flashing light inside this furnace, which could very easily be a trap. Oh no, if only she had a sci-fi hack tool to f*** with the electronics of this furnace. Oh, wait. By the way, the flashing light was a medical wristband thing. It's important, just go with it. Anyway, she continues her pursuit of the big bad blonde bitch. They square off, Stevie's like, If you don't give me the G-Virus, I'll just get a sample from your base. I'd feel more threatened if I didn't have a big metal thing to crush you. Wait, what? Oh no, I should not have worn heels for this mission. Ah! 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 Oh, my leg. That's definitely gonna need a tetanus shot. So Stevie is defeated by the power of mechanics and passes out, meaning it's now your time to shine. Unfortunately, the exact route Stevie went is blocked mysteriously, so you have to find another way around that involves jumping into sewage water with your open bullet wound. Well, at least if the zombies don't get you, then I'm sure the hepatitis or E. coli will. While exploring, you find Stevie seductively slumped over a pile of trash, as well as a videotape showing the whacking zombie attacking a group of soldiers and attempting to eat more of the G-Virus, but missing his mouth like a six-month-old infant. Then some rats start munching on the virus, so I guess this is how it's spread. The door to get to Stevie's unconscious body is locked. However, it's not your conventional lever slash key lock. You need to find half a chessboard scattered around these sewers, killing poop slugs and zombies while wading through the contents of the Raccoon City population's diet. You also find a flamethrower down here, meaning that you're probably gonna have to face something flammable in the foreseeable future. With the door unlocked, you go about powering the trash disposal door between you and Stevie, which I think is well deserved. You've been through a lot to get to this point. Wait a minute, I recognize that suspiciously bulging right arm. It's the Wanking Zombie. He's back again, looking like he's been on a few rounds of trend since you last saw him because he's bulked up like a fitness influencer claiming they're natural. He chases you onto this platform that looks to be a dead end for your limited movement mechanics until you notice a control panel for the crane. Well, how does that help? You know, if you press the buttons, it moves the crane. Yeah, but what does that do? I'm, I'm not too sure. It says on my notes, I came in like a wrecking ball. I came in like a wrecking ball. Once again, you defeat the whacking zombie and he falls out of sight where it's impossible to know whether he did or didn't die and will most likely return later to wreak havoc on your bum hole. But more importantly, you can go get Stevie. Hey, Stevie, are you okay? Oh, that's a big bit of metal. You're definitely going to need a Ted in the shot. Would you pull it out for me? My hands are busy supporting my seductive pose. Aren't you supposed to leave these things in until you get to a hospital? Yes, but a hospital isn't exactly on the cards right now. Fair point. So what's the plan? You need to get out of here. The situation's worse than I thought. She has a metal bashy thing. Oh my god, how are we gonna def- Wait, did you just say a metal bashy thing? Yeah, how do you think I ended up in this position? Okay. Well, anyway, can we go? I suppose. Where's my coat, by the way? I left it with you. Oh, I imagine it's being used as a nest for the radioactive rats down here. Leon, that coat was Louis Vuitton. Why would you name your coat Louie? Stevie uses the medical wristband to unlock a train car to Annette's lab, which takes a while, so you and her have a little chat. You're like, I can't wait to arrest me some bad guys. Leon, this is a federal case. You won't be doing anything. It's my job. But I'm the one with the handcuffs. Well, maybe you should use them on me later. What? But you're not a bad guy. You're not even a guy. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Could you get the virus for me and I'll sort all this out? Yes, mommy, anything for you. I've just remembered that I haven't updated you on Claire in a while. As you remember, it takes her a long time to do things. So after finding the secret entrance in the police station, it takes her that long to make it downstairs that she now has an eight-year-old child. Seriously, though, she fights the whacking zombie, finds this kid just chilling, and goes up the ladder to the police station car park. It's here where the story deviates, surprisingly. While you found an attractive flasher called Stevie in the car park, Claire finds a fat nonce who kidnaps the kid. She needs to get the key card to unlock the car park gate. Once again, same kind of stuff. She gets the electrical parts, but only difference is the key card is in the police chief's office. Side note, the fat nonce was the police chief, and the kid is called Sherry. She's Annette's daughter. Anyway, just as Claire's about to get the key card, the phone ring, starts ringing. Fucker. It's the nonce being like, we have unfinished business, and proceeds to give the exact location where he's holding Sherry captive. Couldn't he have finished his business in the car park so I didn't have to run around collecting those stupid electrical parts? Sherry goes on her own stealth mission to try and escape, and tries to take the keys from the chief's office. <laughs> It doesn't work. Well, actually, it kind of does, because the small child isn't above using acid attacks as a means of escape, and the chief doesn't think to immediately wash the acid off his face as it turns his skin into a sticky syrup. Unfortunately, she doesn't manage to get the keys from the overweight Two-Face and must play the most dangerous game of hide-and-seek until he decides that the acid has burned enough of his skin off. I don't know, maybe he was trying to lose weight fast or something. You're supposed to burn the fat, not the skin off your face. And goes to wash it off, leaving the keys unattended, looking like a legendary-grade cosmetic at the end of a dungeon. Sherry takes the keys and Big Chief gives chase again. As she gets to the door, though, she learns that 
that it's chained from the outside. I don't know how the chief chained up the other side of the door and then got back into the building, but the point is she can't get out and runs back into his office before being caught. Whack King Zombie X Machina appears out of nowhere and force feeds the chief some zombie nurse while Sherry has an existential crisis on the other side of the table. On the flip side, Claire has found her way into the orphanage. Let's hope that Sherry is still alive and hasn't cancelled her subscription to life. Claire goes into the orphanage, the vociferous silence delicately seasoned by the gentle drips of rain on the windows. In the air, a distinct tension as if this were a horror game. Finally, she breaks the silence. Hey, bitch, I'm here for the little shit. Get the fuck out here. No response. Fuck. With no other option, Claire apprehensively explores the dark, creaking halls of the orphanage questioning whether this blonde little shit is worth it. When all of a sudden the chief appears. His body language seems to portray a feeling similar to when you're holding in a shit. It was not a shit that disturbed the vast surface of the chief's stomach, however. The chest burster, ripped straight from the alien franchise. The chief collapses as the life drains from his body, his motivations for kidnapping the small child unknown. Claire, visibly disturbed. What other horrors await this young woman in her quest for unpaid babysitting? Just when Claire thought she'd seen it all, nothing could have prepared her eyes for what would befall them. An untidy room. Oh, and also the kid's not here. There's a trap door in the chief's office where Claire finds Sherry. How the fuck she got down here after the wanking zombie dispatched the chief is beyond me. Then the nice guy appears, I assume looking for you because you still owe him for helping you with the helicopter. Claire and Sherry run away into the lift, but unfortunately some thin metal bars aren't exactly gonna stop a guy who can lift a helicopter with one hand. That might stop him, though. Wacking X Machina once again saves the kid, almost as if they're related in some way. Daddy? Oh, it's Sherry's dad. Well, Sherry's dad quickly turned from protective father to abusive parent, breaks the lift, and the impact makes Claire pass out, only for her to awake being examined by Annette, who I thought was evil, but is doing a great job at not immediately murdering her. Claire's like, where's Sherry? She's probably fine. I don't actually know. She's not fine. She's in the trash place, and passes out with Annette being like, I don't have time for this kid really got the short end of the stick when it came to parents, didn't she? Claire needs to find the chessboard pieces and fight the wanking zombie again to get to Sherry. We've been over this, now back to the love shack. You and Stevie get to the lab, Stevie obviously waiting in the train cart because her leg's in about as good condition as my mental health, while you go and search the place for the G-Virus. Unfortunately, the high-level bioweapon isn't waiting for you at the reception desk, and in order to access it, you need to upgrade your medical wristband. This leads you into multiple activities that are very annoying, but for the plot, we shall go to great lengths. Find the level 2 chip on a dead guy, giving you access to the east wing of the lab, which is converted into a tropical rainforest and see the level 3 chip on one of the workers. Now, in any normal setting, you'd simply climb up the plant and take the chip off the guy, but this is a game with limited movement animations, and instead, you must run around the halls of this lab, cooking vegan zombies with your flamethrower and solving puzzles to unlock new areas, all in the name of banging together a herbicide that someone conveniently left the recipe for on this table, which turns out to be more long-winded than producing a universal cancer medicine just to kill a plant gripping our dead friend. Upon retrieving the level 3 wristband, the nice guy appears just so he can menacingly walk in your direction at the pace of an injured sloth because you still owe him for moving that helicopter. I just wanted to go out for coffee. Why are you running away? The level 3 wristband unlocks the West Wing, where you find a videotape on the floor showing some Spec Ops guys trying to get the G-Virus from William Birkin, Annette's husband. The Spec Ops guys shoot him and take the samples. You go through this area that looks suspiciously like an area you'd find something big and find the G-Virus just chilling. No security or anything. Not even one of those, like, bike locks with the passcodes on it. You take the sample and start heading back to Stevie when Wacking William drops in like Santa, except it's a ceiling, not a chimney. Anyway, yeah, he's here now and you're ready to fight him, but it looks like you don't have to because Annette wanders in and is like, This ends now, wanking William. Yeah, she went from being like, Oh, you'll never stop me, ha ha ha, to I am now good, let's stop this, in the space of about an hour. The game portrays it like she's realized that William is mutating too fast and is getting out of control, but realistically, the entire city is zombified, so I think it got out of control a fair bit ago. She shoots him with a wet thing that makes him sizzle like an egg on a hot pan and starts explaining what happened. After those Spec Ops guys shot him, he injected himself with the G virus, and instead of, you know, antidoting him, or whatever, was just like, oh my god, what have you done? For proceeding to be evil to Stevie and stuff. Anyway, wanking William wakes up and must not be a morning person because he's pissed. Annette lowers the bridge being like, we can't let him get away. As if lowering a bridge 15 feet is going to stop this thing from spider-manning up the wall to terrorize more people like the Grinch on Christmas. With no other option, you fight buff wanking William, basically unloading the extent of the US military's ammunition into it while avoiding its attempts at turning you into floor jam until it dies. Go you. You go and see Annette knocking on Death's door after being thrust against the wall by Wanking William. She's all, You need to stop the G-Virus. Yeah, I would do that, but my dick says I need to give it to Stevie. You really think you can trust her? If she injects herself with it, then we'll just have mutated zombie sex. No, who? What? I mean, she's not FBI. She's a mercenary. Wait, she lied? She's... She's still a woman, right? I think so, yes. Then there's no problem. Bye. You put your faith in Stevie that she won't just sell the G-Virus and instead will solve all the problems you've got as Annette dies. Conveniently, Stevie has made her way into the lab and unlocked the lift down to the control room, but you're Leon S. Kennedy. Calvin Klein model by day, policeman officer by night, and you don't like being led on by attractive women. You're like, the game's up, Stevie. I know you're not FBI. You're finally caught on, did you? 
That's right. I'm actually an only mercenary. Model. Wait, what? Did you just say an OnlyFans model? I meant a mercenary. Now hand over the G-Virus. How much is your monthly subscription? Now is not the time, Leon. Give me the virus or I will shoot you. I don't think you will. Okay, you got me. I thought we could make OnlyFans content together. Really? Well, fuck. Yeah, so Annette was still alive. I don't know if she was just pretending to be dead, but that's not really important. Stevie's been shot and the bridge collapses. You manage to grab her before she goes on a once-in-a-lifetime skydiving trip at the cost of dropping the G-Virus. Annette's like, No one gets the sample now! Acting like there's not a family of rats at the bottom of this pit ready to eat this shit and become Black Plague 2.0. Then she actually dies, like, for real this time. You try and pull Stevie up, but the power of boners is not enough and Stevie falls. No! Subscribe to my OnlyFans. I know this probably isn't a good time, but you should probably get off the bridge. It's about to collapse. With the chance of getting your dick wet lying at the bottom of this pit, you go to finish what was started. The lab has been set to self-destruct, but instead of going out the way you came in, you take the lift down further into the facility. I don't think you're going to be able to find Stevie's body if you go down there. Down here, there's a control room of sorts, and finally, you interact with Claire again after like a bajillion hours, so I should probably catch her up with the story. She just saved Sherry from the trash disposal room. For some reason, Sherry looks like she's got a nice juicy dose of G-Virus, which is true. Annette tells Claire she's been implanted and can't be saved, but then she can be saved? Yeah, madness. So Claire takes Sherry to Annette's lab. To keep things simple, Claire finds the antiviral agent for Sherry in the same place you found the G-Virus sample, which means she does everything you did, once again. Only difference is when she fights Wanking William, she's like, Annette, take this fucking sample over to your fucking daughter, you stupid bitch. I've got a Wanking William to kill. When she returns, Sherry is all better, but the timelines wouldn't match up if Annette didn't die, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> no. I'm sure this child won't be traumatized by this for the rest of her life. Anyway, Claire and Sherry look for a way out and find this train. She also finds a massive mini gun on the floor, but I'm sure she won't need that for anything important. She's trying to get the train working when she sees you on the monitor, which is great. We're all caught up. Back to you, this place is gonna blow, and you can only move at a slow jog, so let's move. You go through the bowels of the facility looking for an escape when Mr. Nice Guy appears again like an unwanted STD. I wish someone was this committed to me. Honestly, I'm jealous. Fortunately, you're saved by a fiery explosion and activate a weird lift thing, presumably to an exit. I don't know. I don't work here. But oh my god, Mr. Nice Guy isn't done and has stripped naked as a last ditch attempt to get you to like him. Problem is, no matter how many bullets you put into him, he just won't stay dead. But have no fear because Weapon Case Chan has come to save you. Oh, how convenient. I wonder where that came from. Well, Call it even, mister. One of these bad boys is enough to break down Nice Guy's upper half on the atomic level, just in time for the lift to reach its destination. Meanwhile, Claire has activated the train lift, but wait, Wanking William didn't die, and he's here now again for the millionth time. If only you had picked up a massive gun earlier on. So hopefully our boy is dead now. I mean, he's exploding and stuff, so it looks like it. Claire sets the train off, so hopefully it's taking her to an exit. So what the fuck are you gonna do when you get out here, you little bitch? I don't know. I'm a child without parents. I'll probably go homeless and die. Hey, am I interrupting? Leon, oh my god, you bitch. I thought you died. It's gonna take more than a Thanos-looking nice guy to kill me. This is Sherry, by the way. She has no parents. <laughs> Something makes the train shake. It's presumably just an earthquake, given the entire facility is about to explode. But Claire goes to check it out instead of you, the train police officer where she finds. Oh my god, it's Wanking William. Please let me escape his torment. Admittedly, his form is sort of extended beyond Wanking William. He's more like World Eater William now. Bullet Eater William. You break off the train cart, losing Wanking William, and he's engulfed by the facility exploding while you guys get to safety. After escaping, you get flipped off by a trucker, and everything's back to normal now, I guess. As you complete Resident Evil 2. Could you guys adopt me? I don't have a home. Fuck you, bitch.